Good evening and welcome. This is Steve Fryer, and you're listening to the Expanding Light Radio Show. And I'm on location today with Ilona Selke, author of Journey to the Center of Creation, The Enlightening World of Dolphins, and The Dimensions of Dreamtime. Welcome, Ilona. Hi, Steve. I'm really glad to be here. I really enjoy radio shows that promote the expansion of the mind and the inner dimensions. Well, you came to the right place. We're out here near O'Hare, and it's uh, the day after the, uh, what do you call that thing? The Whole Life Expo. Yeah, I have, I have a block on that, but I was there yesterday and the day before, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. And I, I understand you made a wonderful presentation there, which I missed, but I heard it was well attended. Yeah, standing room only. It. I was delighted. You know, how many people want to know about multi, multi, multiple dimensions, multi multi dimensional living dolphins I mean Chicago was full of people I was really thrilled not quite like that on the east coast yet not yet well, I thought the Midwest was more retarded than the east coast <laughs> apparently Chicago is a good exception well I'm glad to uh, hear that it gives me faith yes. well tell us a little bit about your background before we get into your book journey to the center of creation with the dolphins you know, when people ask me about my background, I have to say I'm eclectic. I was born in the Himalayas, spoke Persian as my first tongue and German, was raised in Germany for 17 years, and then came to America, studied philosophy, psychotherapy, body-centered psychotherapy. And I'm living on an island in the Northwest Pacific, as well as partially on an island in Hawaii. That wouldn't be Port Townsend, would it? No, close enough, though. In that vicinity. Yeah, I was just out there near Portland, and I wanted to visit there, and I think I will next time. Beautiful area. Yeah, it's. Uh, we have whales there, we have orcas there, and people ask me, is that where you go swimming? And I say, God, no way. <laughs> I go to Florida in the wild with dolphins. I go to Hawaii, and even there I'm wearing a wetsuit. And at times I work simply out of body, communicating at long-range distances with... Um, dolphins as well as other dimensional beings. I've seen many dolphin-related books printed and, and articles, obviously, in the last five or six years. So I'm wondering what caused you to uh, decide to publish this book? What do you think makes your book unique among the other dolphin books? I, uh, Yeah, a very great question. A great many books on dolphins are scientific attempts at trying to decipher their brain size, their capacity for language, their meaning in life. And uh, all the f much humans can figure out is, yes, they have a large brain. The ones that look like Flipper, the one uh, that is on the cover of my book, um, it's called Bottlenose Dolphin, has 1,600 grams of brain versus a human that has on average 1,200 grams of brain. That makes dolphins have about 30% more brain mass, as well as having more convolution in the gray matter. And they used to think that more convolution in the gray matter meant greater intelligence mm -hmm. until they found out cetaceans had sometimes more than we do. So we dropped <laughs> that measurement device. But um, so what makes it different is that I found some of the researchers who based their work on Dr. John Lilly's work, like Roberta Goodman, who discovered that telepathy is a real way of communicating with, do with dolphins. Uh, I describe in my book some of the, uh, many of those events where I have provable experiences. Where one time, for example, I'm out in in the boat in the, in Florida. We're out with a group of seven, with including the captain, and the one lonely dolphin comes to our boat. Now we happen to know them by name. We they always show up, and here's sweetheart, my favorite dolphin of all, but only one. I think I read about that. Yes, and so that's in my book. And I mentally say, sweetheart, how about bringing back your part of family so we all can swim with you guys? And he says mentally back to me, I'll be back in 15 minutes. I'll bring them. Then he dashed off, and everybody is like, oh, no, wait. He's gone and no dolphin in sight, and we've been waiting all morning already. Did you tell him what you were doing? No, the because... The telepathy part? No, I mean, I just waited. I knew that probably he would be coming back in 15 minutes. And so, lo and behold, he did with the rest of his pods, mem pod family members. Um, many of those kinds of experiments where um, I experimented with images, like 
when sometimes in captivity where we swim and we imagine let's say a super luminous ball to the left of ourselves 10 feet away and we said if you can see it please swim through it the dolphins would head right through it just to make sure we weren't making this all up we put this experiment into 10 different places within the mm -hmm. pool and every single time the dolphin would head straight through the light into that ball of light then if we imagine the ball being right around ourselves the dolphin came right up to us they read our minds That's so amazing. amazingly mm -hmm. clearly and from so so what I write about has to do in part with dolphins and their higher dimensional capacity of perceiving telepathy imagery very accurately as well as how we as humans can apply that in our daily life to make our world more like where dolphins have the fun and the joy. Well, we certainly need that. You have a very interesting title to your book, Journey to the Center of Creation. That's part one of the title, and I'd like you to explain that. And then you have a part two, and we'll get to that next. Entering the dream world, entering the world of dolphins and the dimensions of dream time. So what is, what is the title? What is, what is that all about? The book in two parts, one is about dolphins, the other part is in how we apply what dolphins know how to do. And when you see them depicted on paintings, oftentimes they're drawn out into space somewhere, into galaxies. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. Dancing in interdimensional, interdimensional space. Journey to the center of creation is the journey to the center of creation. Through imagery, through accessing higher dimensional spaces to where we can train our multidimensional mind accessing worlds that are higher levels of blueprints to where when we make changes in the blueprint level we create changes in the physical world so s numerous of the stories are about making drastic time jumps going back in time and uh, 50 minutes half an hour at times mm -hmm. uh, to those kinds of stories in there how to do it as well as recreating painful past events as well as why would we want to create recreate a painful past event well you want to recreate it because a it didn't work out well in the first time might as well recreate it to where it gives you the results you're really looking for oh, now. you mean with a happier ending with a happy ending yes that's right and the dolphins can help you do that well, dolphins are able in inter interdimensional space travel movement. They use some of the mind that we as humans can develop, such as the utilizing imagery, utilizing frequencies that they generate, that if we copy that, we as humans start living in higher frequency ranges by emanating more love, more purity in our heart, more... Um, brilliancy in our visual mental imagery when we do that we can actually create an amazing shift in the physical outside world um, what kind of uh, experience did could you relate to us that, okay. where where you first figured this out well where I first figured it out it was a long time ago um, let me give you a pretty drastic example which I think is the most ex one of the very exciting ones I was uh, on a train in Germany ready to see a friend uh, my partner and I uh, were going to Stuttgart on the way down we were delayed our train was not left uh, was not let out of the train station then it stopped every 10 minutes and was delayed even more and you know those German train stations they're cute they have all these clocks clocks hanging there reminding me at every stop that we were delayed even more 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes and we were supposed to meet a friend at the other end who I only had the uh, time arranged with and no phone number and no address since he just moved that week and we just traveled to Germany to meet him but we had arranged to meet so when we get there we would be late and he would be gone because he had to go to a rehearsal that afternoon to um, practice um, fiddle fiddle yes uh, what do you call it classical <laughs> rehearsals violins. <laughs> violins that's it you know um, he had to be on time so I'm very frustrated I do this imagery transformation process where I redirect the energy into the true highest intent of what my energy really wanted. My fire in my stomach wanted to be on time. So I go in the book through describing many times how you can apply that process. What happens when we get there? Well, we get into a different uh, gate because we're late. And then we get out and then we look for our friend 
anticipating we wouldn't see him. And suddenly we hear him calling. And he says, Don, Ilona, you're early. What happened? We looked early? Up, we looked <laughs> up at the clock and our jaws dropped open 50 minutes earlier than we were supposed to be arriving. Now, how that happened? How did that happen? See, I, did, I use these techniques more often in my life. I have those kinds of events happening. Now, this is Germany, where the clocks are always on time and the trains are always on time. And we don't have time zone changes, and it was in August. It wasn't daylight switching time. So there's no possible way to explain this in the 3D world. There is no possible way, and it's not the only time we did this. We have these kind of events happen a lot. I start out the book with describing how we get on an airplane, and they call the flight off. They say, well, it's delayed indefinitely because we have a problem on board, and we don't know how long it's going to be to fix it. I recreate the fabric of, of the universe I want to be living in, uh, together with my partner through imagery. But what you need to do is raise in your feeling or imagination body to a dimension where you could almost see like you're floating above the entire space. You're in a blueprint creation space. Now in radionics, in quantum physics, that's called the quantum foam dimension. The, foam, the dimension of all possibilities. Quantum scientists say your choice as to which outcome you expect will determine the outcome of the scientific experiment. So here I am floating mid-space, recreating my event. As I'm done with this, I come back into my space of body, and I you know, look at Don, look around, and within five minutes they announce that we're ready for boarding. They found, luckily, a very minute problem. <laughs> when you live like that on a daily basis, you come to rely on the ability of moving through dimensions. Now dolphins move through dimensions all of the time and people, when they learn how to access other dimensions, can contact dolphins, communicate with them, as well as angels, uh, elves. Um, uh, you can virtually recreate disease patterns into health patterns. But you need to learn, you need to understand that the world truly does exist out of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dimensions, more than the three. I've heard we have at least ten that are accessible, and then it goes way beyond that, but we wouldn't be able to understand it anyway, so why bother? Right, right. <laughs> Mathematics has figured out some of ten or twelve or whatever, but... No, I think the quantum string theory I was hearing at mm. the Whole Life Expo, they were mm. saying something like 26 mm. dimensions. But right. Ten is about all we can do. Do, right, with our little, really. our little consciousness. And um, through the power of imagery and through the ability of ra raising our vibration to a dimension where we are. Imagine as if you were raising to the level of the stratosphere. Okay, that's easy. Yeah. And from there, imagine what kind of world you would encounter there. I don't know, I guess serene, powerful? Yeah. Most likely that's what evokes in most people's mind. The higher they go in their imagination, the more serene that place becomes. And there, you can look down on events of creation. We're getting some creation sounds here. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's and not bad. <laughs> you're really, okay, and see, when you raise your vibration, you create these supernatural events, <laughs> like those sounds. And then you look onto the field of the three-dimensional world, and the changes you make from that high vantage point need to be very minute only in order to create a vast change in the three-dimensional world. It's kind of like a triangle, a pyramid top, expanding down at the base to a large field. Has this worked for you? I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I have been experimenting with the weather yes. change. And I get a lot of flack from you know metaphysicians and New Agers and so forth. They say, you can't mess with the weather. You're creating terrible karma. But I, you know, the way I first started doing this was when I started going to soccer games with my, my young sons. And it might be you know, cloudy and threatening and dark clouds. And I'd think, while I'm driving there, I don't want it to be that way for the game when I get there. I want to enjoy this game, and maybe it can rain later. So I would just uh, ask creation if it's in the highest good of all concern. Could we have, you know, at least a dry game and let it rain later if it needs to rain? Right. And invariably it would happen. Exactly, exactly. What you do is you realize that the clouds or the entire weather consciousness is an entity of consciousness. 
and then you can communicate with it and then you can cooperate with it and it can cooperate with you you're simply asking for cooperation I remember once I was in Baltimore studying philosophy going on a bright sunny day I said now if this all works let me try an experiment I was sitting on this large golf course lawn, lawn and said well you know the Indians used to call rain if it needed to be raining on their corn stalk and maybe I can do that. So I asked some raindrops to be dropping on me, a mini little cloud, you know, the other way around from you. <laughs> and when it sprinkled on me, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. My, my little niece, she did it, you know, I had her coming she did from, it too. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's, she was eight years old and I had her coming from Germany and I wanted her to weed in my yard. She said, Ilona, I think I need to talk to those clouds. So she went and talked to all those clouds and it started raining. You know, and I figure, I always ask for the highest good mm -hmm. and Gets for cooperation. And for cooperation. Mm -hmm. If it's appropriate, let it be. If not, something greater can happen. You know, we could start a business. <laughs> you know, in Hollywood, when they make films, they take out weather insurance. <laughs> <laughs> if you could guarantee certain kinds of weather, you know, you could make a lot of money. <laughs> well, you know, I think there is a Mm, there is something to be worried about there in terms of when we get hooked into money making when our own welfare and income depends on something we're more likely to say uh, let's not consider the highest good how about our personal good here <laughs> good point <laughs> now in part two of your 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 book title entering the the world of dolphins and the dream time what is dream time I and mean, we've heard this word yeah. bandied about for quite a long time at least i have and yeah. i'd like a clear definition of what you think it means Okay, I use it in the in the form as Aborigines would use it. Um, there was a lady at the Whole Life Expo talking about the dream time that, and she had been raised around uh, Aborigines, Suzanne Osborne, and it's a dimension where you you could easily equate it with the dimension of the blueprint, an altered state that is accessible through the bridge of imagery, that when you enter that other world oneness is created with all that exists and you can communicate with anything at any distance now that's give me an example okay something that uh, would Makes be good sense. for our audience okay. all right um first time i went out swimming with the dolphins i entered in my imagination to the place where i could talk to a pod of dolphins and since same as you when you talk to those clouds as an entity i talked to the entire pod as a group and I said, okay, I know you're out there, how about meeting together? I felt this rumbling around, like, okay, let's find a consensus. There was part of the dolphin beings that wanted to, and the other part were not so interested. So they said, 8.45 tomorrow morning at the secret beach number three. So you would do this the night before? I did it the night before, sorry, yes, mentioned. And so then I hiked out there in the morning to show up at 8.45 precisely when the dolphins showed up out of the blue. Five minutes later, though, they left. They said, look, if we hadn't left, you would have never known that we were on time. <laughs> That's but true. That's true. That's a good, good point. Another one is, in my book, I describe how I talk with the entity consciousness of some corporations to help create a healthier expression of their intention to provide for their employees. Well, let me get this straight. You said the entity of corporations. Yeah, just like... I've never the, heard of that. You know, like the entity of clouds mm -hmm. uh, is the same as an entity of a corporation as the, as the entity consciousness of a family, of each individual. It's so it's sort of like Rupert Sheldrake's idea. Sort of. It's, it's the like an entire field, field. Yeah. Of, of that mm -hmm. corporation, right. the, the collective consciousness, consciousness. Mm -hmm. of that company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like an entire field that's made up out of the intention of the business and all the people mm -hmm. concerned. And I usually imagine it like the tip of an iceberg, and I communicate with that head energy. Because I figure if I got the head, the, red, the rest will automatically follow. So I do transformative images, which um, are very exciting to read about, and I think a little bit controversial. Is it in the book, too? It's in the book. Wonderful. I haven't read the whole book, so excuse yeah. me. Well, 
Well, you know, this is this is exciting because uh, I've had the idea for many years that I'd, I'd someday I'd like to do spiritual business consulting. Yes. And here I'm, you know, getting a book on dolphins, and you're telling me how you do it. That's wonderful. Right. And what I uh, when you say how entering the world of dim- dolphins and the dimensions of dream time, what it really is about is entering and and how to enter techniques, methods of how to enter these other worlds, written in an easy to understand adventuresome format that tell stories and examples that tie together into a whole big picture and when you get to the end of the book I hope you do there is a phenomenal change the dolphins asked me mentally they send a picture of underwater detonating mushroom cloud I read that part yeah okay well you read the last next three or four chapters after that the answer is in the end of the book. Um, so they gave you a picture of uh, mushroom clouds going yes. off, and you at first didn't know how to interpret that. Right. What did you think that meant uh, immediately? Right. I thought maybe, you know, since I was in the waters of, of Florida, I thought maybe the Cubans detonate bombs underwater, and maybe they wanted me to go over to the Cubans and talk to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I didn't do that. What did it turn out to be? Two months later, I went on to a conference to Mexico, and I saw at one of the airports, uh, was in San Jose, I saw a Time magazine cover of the French president announcing he was still going right. to detonate I all saw those. That. Right. That was a big deal. It was a huge deal, except I don't read the newspaper, I don't watch TV, I don't listen to the radio, sorry to say so. I'm usually too busy practicing music or writing and doing the creative project. Somebody has to so, do it. So where were they blowing off these uh, these bombs? They were blowing off the intu- nuclear bombs in the South Pacific. Underwater? And they were going or in to. The, in the atmosphere? In underwater. Those were... Ew. Yeah, see, I, didn't, I knew as much as you did. I didn't know that. I guess that would be painful on the ears of anyone of, in, in the vicinity, even miles and miles away. Miles and miles away. Underwater, the sound travels ten times faster than anywhere on Earth. So, so how, how far would a detonation like that travel? All around the world, I bet. Well, the whales would probably hear it all the way around the world. They had around-the-world communication for the last millions of years. We <laughs> have had it for, what, less than 50 and only a percentage of our human race. So, come to figure out that they'll, they were smarter than we were, but we're just starting to... So, when I found out that the dolphins had this d- request to have help with the de- underwater detonation of mushroom clouds, of, of atomic bombs, I went to work. So what the rest did you do? Oh, I will not tell you the answer. I mean... <laughs> oh, it's in the book? It's in the book. Okay. Well, well you I, could I, give us a clue, though. Okay, I'll give you a clue. Did you get on the internet and ask for people to pray? No, I because didn't. people were doing that, you know. That's great. Well, see, I think, partially, we all live in our own holographic picture show. So I thought, I'm going to recreate my picture show. And um, I was very happy with my picture show results. Now, each one of us is going to have their own uh, attractive, resonant field, their own people in their own lives that are reflecting to each one of you who's listening your own world as to what you resonate with. Some of the pictures that come back to you may be very happy, and some of them may not. Now. You can go within your own mind and within your own body and locate the, the feelings that are not so happy, like my frustration feeling when I was traveling on the train in Germany, and communicate with those images. And the, the beauty is that at the deepest intent of any of those feelings that are not working, that are dark or, or dense or unhappy, there is a positive intent. That anger inside of me wanted to be on time. All I needed to do is create... Transmute it? Yes, transmute it into the image of what it already wanted. So it represents a desire at some level, but you've got to figure out what the actual positive desire may be. Exactly, exactly. Maybe a lack of love or a lack of communication or something. Beautiful. So transmute it in that way. Look for the clue. And the moment you get an image for that experience fulfilled... And you have an image of uh, something that represents that fulfillment. In my case, let's say, I can't remember what it was, uh, a rainbow image or a clock and a rainbow together of being on time in, uh, in, in Stuttgart, absorbed the energy image of my red firewall. Now, I never get rid of old energy. I only transmute it, taking it into a higher dimensional expression of the same intention. Before the red fireball wanted to get me on time, it just try to do it through anger. Now it's getting me there on time through the fulfilled image and feeling. And that's the trick. You bypass linear, logical, 
time sequences by being in the fulfilled feeling of where you want to wind up. Lack, laced together with an image, and you will attract the reality that corresponds to that holographic resonant picture in your mind, and that's the dream time work. Very beautiful, Alora. This is Steve Fryer. You're listening to the Expanding Light radio program, and with me is Ilona Selke, who is the author of Journey to the Center of Creation. And uh, stick with us. We've got to take a break now. We'll be right back right after this. And we're back. This is Steve Fryer, and you're listening to the Expanding Light radio program. And I'm on location for this edition with Ilona Selke author of Journey to the Center of Creation. And uh, we're in a big hotel ballroom. That's why it sounds so huge in here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're talking about this wonderful book, which really, you know, it sounds like it's about dolphins, but it's also about quantum physics and, and different methods for how you can create your own reality. And it sounds like it really works because in your workshop at the uh, Whole Life Expo, you were SRO, standing room only. Yeah. And I was, I was wondering, did you visualize that? <laughs> uh, we did actually work on that. <laughs> because uh, before that, I hadn't done anything. And uh, in different locations, it wasn't quite that way. It also has to do with the readiness of the consciousness in any given place. We co-create reality. So we co-create with resonant fields. And um, really, what the dolphins do really well is live in, in high dimensions, where the higher you go, you experience greater sensations of love, greater sensations of oneness, greater sensations of joy and bliss, which people feel and are evoked to feel when they are around dolphins. Why do you think we humans are so cut off from that world of, of love and, and high-level joy? My personal take on that is that we have, as a species, evolved our rational mind. We have um, developed our linear thinking ability to such an extent that we can manipulate the outside physical world really well. But we have very, barely not at all, developed our multidimensional ability, our heart space, our angelic presence. And it may partially be that the universe is making an experiment. Dolphins have developed, with a large brain, the capacity of being almost non-logical, non-linear in a sense. Um, we as humans are almost the other experiment. And I feel that as a survival need, if we want to make it as a species, we will need to develop the intuitive and higher dimensional faculties. We need to be able to rise to the fourth, fifth dimension to see the meaning and the dangers ahead down the road. If we can go into the future and look down the road and see the results of what our present action is creating, we might actually make different choices. Now, there are some people who practice that, like we were talking here in just a moment ago. Right, I mentioned that um, I'm trained as a science of mind practitioner, yeah. which means I'm licensed to heal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very, uh, science of mind is a very, I would say, a left brain process, step by step. Uh, some modalities are five steps or seven steps or whatever that lead you to that place that I would call the, the causal realm. Right. The, abs the realm of the absolute. And it sounds like the same thing you were referring to earlier about this quantum foam arena. Right. It's the, it's the dimension in which you can basically draw out your new drawing and recreate a reality. How do you actually do it? What's your favorite way of doing that? I understand there may be different ways. Yes, there are very many different ways. Some people do it through prayer, and they kind of just send out this wish towards maybe an angelic presence that they imagine will go to work. A wish? How do oh. wishes work? You know. Isn't wish sort of half doubtful, and doesn't that sort of inhibit the process? Well, that's why some wishes come true and some others don't. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're talking about creating a resonant field. That sounds something like the dolphins would do with their... Because I understand dolphins have... Uh, uh, they're working with frequencies mm -hmm. much more than we are. I mean, much, they're, they're yeah. consciously working with frequencies. And I, I read somewhere in your book, it, it, it sounded almost like they had the ability to also diagnose humans, so they could read us, sort of like x-rays. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another uh, form of the use of their sonar, I would guess. Yeah. How does that work? Well, 
they are able to look with their sonar and echolocation into the body of another species. They can detect whether a woman is pregnant, oftentimes will nuzzle really? her stomach. Yeah, uh, One person had a tumor in his chest unknown to him, and the dolphin was banging into his chest, and they went to have an x-ray taken to see if anything had gotten broken to find the tumor as a result of that. Uh, a different kind of experience happened when I went swimming the first time with dolphins. I was out for about an hour, hour and a half, maybe swimming with the dolphins, a long time, and I suddenly heard the message, get out of the water now, you have just enough energy to get back. Now, two other people who were with me in the water heard the same message about the get out of the water You're now. swimming with your uh, in the fins and everything. Yes, fins and snorkel, and we'd all been out there. And no boat. And no boat, ooing okay. and aahing, and we were like mm, half an hour away from shore. Wow. Yeah. You have to be a little adventuresome. I was scared of water. and Without dolphins, I still don't go in the water. <laughs> but um, Couldn't they give you a free ride so as part of the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they actually are said to evoke the transcendence of fear in people, that you are asked to develop a greater sense of courage, greater sense of trust, and that they ed make you work at your edge of, the, of your capacity. But getting back to that message, now I... We listened to the message. We all went back. But halfway back, my left leg gave out and started freezing up. I couldn't use Cramping. it. Cramping. Yes. Mm -hmm. I panicked. I eventually made it under, you know, with a lot of exhaustion back to shore. When I tried to stand up out of the waves, I barely, I couldn't stand up. I collapsed back in the wave. Had there been more waves that day, I wouldn't have made it out of the water. It was luckily a flat day, and so I crawled back onto shore and then rested there until some strength came back. So now the dolphins sense, knew exactly how much strength you had in the conditions, and they, they warned you just to, to, to yes. tell you how much energy you had left and you had forgotten. Yeah. You did not know. Right. And I think that was not a function of their sonar. I think that was a function of a higher perception that they have that we sometimes have as humans. Some of the humans do. And all of us can develop that capacity. Well, this is a form of higher logic, I would say. Mm, I would say it's a higher form of intuition. <laughs> well, which is actually a higher form of logic. Which is actually you think a higher about form of the mind, however you look yeah, at it. They, yeah, the mind would have to know how much gas is left in the tank. Yeah, and mm -hmm. how can they know how much gas is left in my tank? Right, exactly. You know, that's the part. How did they know that the bombs were being detonated on, in the South Pacific when the dolphins were swimming in Florida? They have a capacity of transferring information across the globe to, through a telepathic internet. Now, that is another higher frequency that we usually can't measure. Scientists have yet not been able to measure telepathy and how it works, yet, yet it happens. Um, we can affect, uh, through radionics, growth of plants at a distance simply by altering uh, frequency modulations that science doesn't say exists. Well, I heard that they have this thing called HARP up in Alaska, and that they can tune this into the, the resonant frequency of your bed coils and reprogram any city, any population while we sleep, when we're most vulnerable. So maybe they just don't want us to know that they know more. I would imagine they've studied radionics. Yeah, yeah, it actually, agencies like the CIA use that, have the ability of using it. Actually, they use remote viewers. They, um, scientists that I personally know, I won't mention the names, have trained CIA members to do remote viewings in, in remote safes. They use all that stuff on a regular basis. They just won't tell the public. Because if we all knew, mm -hmm. we would have access to higher dimensions, and we wouldn't be controllable. Because and they want to keep their edge. The government wants to keep the edge. Right, because, what, yeah, right, you can milk the sheep a lot, or the cows a lot better when you don't tell them that the fence isn't really loaded, you know. <laughs> um, you, were, you were talking about, there are sometimes people, practitioners, who use the power of the mind to create a better car, or more money. Right, that's, that's a common uh, thing to do, or use of the science of mind and, and the treatment Yes. We call it tr prayer treatment. Right. Now, um, as far as health is concerned, that's a great method. Why use um, pills if you can use it through imagination or the prayer power? What I've noticed is we train teachers in the course of living from vision, and they, we train them in various countries. And invariably, when people tap into the deeper purpose of their life, 
through the power of imagery, accessing their higher self, accessing their purpose in life, they invariably start utilize, start developing a greater sense of love and ease and a greater frequency field that is almost like they're starting to live an angelic life. Like the dolphins. Yeah, exactly. Starting to live in the frequency field of the dolphins or angelic beings mm -hmm. rather than simply utilizing the power of the mind for personal gain. Or the ego. Or the ego, exactly. So we're moving, not utilizing the power of the mind for personal gain, but for the gain of creating a sort of heaven on earth in, around yourself. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I'm getting good vibes. Yes. <laughs> this feels good. You know, I... And you're one of the messengers. Yeah, and, and, and actually, I that's one of the messages I got, messages I got from the being around dolphins this, in, in dreams, is go and show how we can create heaven on earth. Heaven is not a state where you go to, although after death we do transcend into those high spaces as well, but you can create a slow life, you can create a happy life, you can create a heavenly life. And the trick is by clarifying your own system, your own emotions, by dealing with all the blockages and finding out what their gift is, what the diamond within that coal is like, you become a shining star. So each each uh, so-called blockage or problem, exactly. you could look for the, uh, the gift in it. Right. Give me an example, maybe with yourself or someone you know. Um, well, God, there are so many. Uh, let's say I'm really frustrated at my partner because Don, my sweetheart, lover, and husband, has done everything wrong in my life, and oh my God, he isn't getting it straight, and I'm dealing with that frustration, right? Here I have this knot in my stomach and this frustration and anger. Well, so I take it out, let myself communicate with it, and find out what it really wants. It may want to be understood. It may want to be loved. I just ask, what would that look like? Okay, I get an image of, of a pink heart or of a, of, a, of a sunset, you know? It's like, that's what I want. Ah, is that what you were working for, your frustration? I get it. Well, you know, it was one way of going about it, but probably wasn't going to get me the results. So then I simply take that energy of the frustration and move it into the fulfillment of that sunset, and now let the sunset absorb the old image, old information. Soon, the sunset in my head gets very busy and creates my sweetheart, Don, to be magnificently expressing that sunset feeling in my life. Mm. Suddenly, he comes and hugs me and everything works. Magic. Now, what, are, what would most women do? They'd get on the their, their case of the husband, yeah. right? They'd start nitpicking or nagging or, you know, getting bitchy or whatever, and then they'd turn a cold shoulder and maybe they'd go have a drink. Right go in the other room and that would be like that for days, maybe weeks, maybe years. Right. And so instead, what both people wanted is to be loved, to be understood, to be respected. And if you just put a new song into your radio station, if your own mind, you will create that sunset experience that you're looking for, or the Palm Beach, or whatever. You know, I love radio analogies. Yes. <laughs> my, my, the way I look at it is we're all broadcasters. Yes. We all have a, a radio tower inside of our head. And uh, whatever we broadcast, we get back. And do you know why? Because the signal is always the strongest right at the tower. So if you're sending out hate to someone miles away across the world, guess what? You're going to get it much stronger because it's coming right out of you. Right. So then you're, you know, you're giving yourself a, a bad deal. Right. And in my book, I give a lot of experiences and descriptions through an, a, a beautiful way of reading it. Actually, it's easy to understand, very uplifting, uh, but a way of tapping. The painful part, the hard part, the fear part, and transform it and make it in that beautiful sunset, into that palm beach, into that flower that you want it to be, into the rose of love. And all the people, the hundreds and thousands of people we've trained are living proof of the results. People only have to use this on a daily basis. 
start this. You, you have a workshop where you, you teach this, do you not? Yes. What's it called? Well, we have a number of them. One has to do with holographic imaging. The other one people can actually buy on video is called Living from Vision. You can do this on a video? Well, we have we have this entire course where you part of it is guided imagery, part of it is you write down things, the other part is doing exercises with cassette tapes each morning and evening. Really? So you practice mm -hmm. three hours once a week with this video, you get five videos, so you do it over five weeks, so you develop a habit. During the week you practice with the audio tapes, morning and evening, and by five weeks you've developed habits of transformative imagery that creates the results in your life that you're looking for. Um, at the end of the show, I'll give you the 800 number if you want, where you can uh, take a, either order it or inquire about it. Why don't you go, go ahead and give it out now, and we'll give it out again later. Okay. So go get a pencil. If you miss it right now, you can get it later. That's right. Um, actually, as you're getting ready to write this down, the publishing house has an offer where if you buy the book, Journey to the Center of Creation, it's 1695, they are giving away a 30-minute video with footage called Dolphins in the Wild beautifully narrated with uh, kind of a meditation narration that is very uplifting. Dolphins from Florida in the wild, ecstatic, I mean, even X-rated scenes on there. <laughs> That's really, a great deal. Yeah, and, <laughs> and dolphins in Hawaii that are playing the leaf game with me as one of the footages on there. 30 minutes that's normally retailing for 19.95 free with the purchase of the book for a limited time only so um, you know I know that you're airing the show pretty soon I think it's throughout the year maybe okay. through November or something they're doing it so what's the 800 number oh that's thank you very much 1-800-758-78 Three six, that's seven five eight seven eight three six. That translates like seven. Just do it. One eight hundred seven. Just do it. I like that. Is there something that we as humans can learn from dolphins? And do they really? Do they have a message that yeah. you found? Yeah. An overall message? Yeah. Over and over, when I hear people who've swum with dolphins, what they say is, start living your dreams. Go figure what your dreams are. Really listen inside. Join the multidimensional part of yourself that's waiting for you to awaken. Um, when I was talking about some people use man their power of manifestation for, you know, getting a bigger car or a better right. house. Yeah, that's better great. job. Yeah. yeah, but what does your soul really want you to do? What you, you know inside. Each one of us knows that our soul wants a particular form of nourishment and has a gift to give. Wants to learn something. What is that? What is your higher pot potential? And if you lived that already, what would you look like? What would you feel like? And the dolphins awaken the sense of daring to dream and going for our dreams. Um, the message I hear a lot is clean up the oceans, quit throwing stuff into the ocean. I mean, use, by all means, biodegradable soaps for one and your wash soap in doing your laundry. I mean, little things like that. Um, the other one is wake up. And most people who are called by the dolphins have the feeling of already wanting to wake up to their multidimensional self. You know, this is, this is probably the most important message that, that we could get, yeah. is it not? Yeah. Because we as humans have been so asleep in the last 10,000 years. The Aborigines have lived in the world of dream time, in the world of the blueprint of the creation. They know how life works. We as humans in the West have simply forgotten. We've been indoctrinated either by powerful churches or sciences. We always have given our power away. And what a my book, what I'm doing through the book, is giving people hope that their own creation makes sense, that their whole evolution, evolution of soul has a higher purpose and is being called for by higher dimensional beings to wake up. I know in the, uh, the science of creation that is taught in many of the schools of metaphysics, you can create you know, the car, the better... Right home or the health right. or the job or whatever maybe heal something but it all it struck me that that's nice that's good but after a while i began to think well gee what if what if the things that we desire are are not coming from our true self in other words they're they're, mm. they're being programmed in but by television the media yeah. and our society yeah. and so we we have to find a way to to burst out of that bubble that uh, one of the workshops that I attended at the uh, Whole Life Expo 
David Icke, I think his name is, and he, he drew a picture of the soul sort of encapsulated by this bubble of fear, mm -hmm. which I get is created by society. And that is really what we're endeavoring to break through because that is what keeps us in lockstep in this right. uh, mode of, of creating out of fear, out of guilt, uh, out of trying to keep up with the Joneses or all of these, these manipulations mm -hmm. to keep us hard at work at the grindstone, maybe working two and three different jobs and, and guess what, never being happy or, or having these images strung out in front of us that, well, if we got the new car, that better house or made more money, had the better job, then we would be happy, but the evidence is all around us. It never happens. Right. The, um, the power of creation and the answer in actually creating satisfaction lies in the fact that you pre-create the image or the feeling of the fulfilled result. Once you have created the feeling already fulfilled, you're already there. If the car comes, great, and it usually does. But what people discover as the next step is that they actually want to spend time creating joy, nourishment of their soul, harmony, love. Those are all growing steps. Having a great house and a good place to live is one step. But you know what? We are, we've been very busy spending our energy on toys, moving our energy outward. What dolphins do is put all their energy inward with each other. They make a lot of love in the water. They play with each other a lot. <laughs> and you know what? Well, they're very happy. <laughs> They don't war on each other like humans do. They don't take each other's houses away or steal anything. When actually playing with the leaf game with a dolphin, if they don't let, if you don't let go of the leaf and let it float for a few seconds by itself, they won't take it from you. So there is this real understood sense of that creation of joy and happiness is, is way higher than the possession of anything. And we all know that deep down inside. And the the way to get there is by entering higher frequencies. When you send out those antennas to your higher self, and you do that maybe three times a day, doo -doo -doo -doo, you start... Do, you, you mean I do it? Or I, we all do it? We all do it. How do we do that? Maybe we don't know we do it. Well, simple exercise. If, pretend right now that around you, you had a bubble of light. Rather than a bubble of fear. Right. <laughs> I like that better. Yeah. The bubble of fear is actually a part of creation. I mean, creation exists out of darkness and light. We can't get away from that, otherwise we wouldn't have form. But if you learn how to play with it and rise above that checker game of dark and light, you're no longer subjugated to the darkness. You simply use it as part of the play. And you go and say, dear darkness, dear light, you're very beautiful. Now get busy and make me angel wings or, you know, make me enlightened, or whatever it is, it, it will shape, the quantum foam consists out of black and white holes, will shape around the image or the concept that you hold as a being. So now the way I do it, like let's say I call a friend on the phone, Okay. all right, and I say, let's meet. And let's pretend we can meet as a light bubble. You shoot out a straight light beam out of the top of your head and come to a point, and I come to a point, and then we'll put those points together. Somewhere in the stratosphere? Somewhere in the stratosphere. That's right, exactly there. And as we do, and send out the dimensional rays into the other dimensions, and feel for that presence of the other person. I'm going to do that with you right now. I see you smiling already. Then, we can actually touch in spirit. Now, it's easy to do when you look at somebody else's eyes for a, for a while, and you start imagining that you actually have like a a globe or a bubble of light above your head mm -hmm. and just move all your attention into that space and sense what kind of bubble the other person is has. You know, it's a beautiful allegory for recognizing the deeper essence. And when you play with that, you can always ask for assistance from our guardian angels. You know, it's a great metaphor for, for being protected against anything that might look harmful. I mean, that's... Is there really anything harmful out there? Well, see, there is a law of resonance. And anything you can send out can come back to you. The more you focus on love, guess what you get? So most of the people are afraid of experimenting with higher dimensional things because they're afraid of the unseen. You know, if we can't see what's out there, we're scared. Well, you know, I think I know why. Uh, over the ages, we you know, villages used to have their village god. Right. And it, it occurred to me when you were talking earlier about the sort of the uh, the entity of the corporation right. that you speak to and and yes. work with to change to up level. 
wouldn't it be the same thing for a small village yes. or even yes, a, a, a city? Mm -hmm. So if yes. these people were living in fear, they would create a god that was sort of a fearful god, right. a, a terrible god. In fact, I've even heard of experiments where people work to create an entity consciously. Right. And they'll have it try to do things as an experiment. Right. And realistically, we can create and conjure up almost anything. The one thing that happens, though, is as you... Life is designed to work. Creation would have long ceased to exist if some big gobbledygook energy was in malintended and was, was trying to destroy everything. We would have been leveled out. We would have been gone. Right. But guess what? We're not. There's something else at work that is trying to create evolution. It's called expanding that consciousness and you are a spark of that consciousness that part of the light is alive and well within each one of us and it is doing its best to come out of its shell and make the next step and as we do and we reach out and touch one another not only through telephones but through our love antennas we create a greater field of love now some people live in the rebels some people live in heaven on earth and if you send out a resonant field of kindness, of seeing the positive within the other person, guess what the other person is going to resonate back to you? I couldn't guess. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> like your radio station, you know, yeah. send a positive song and the other people start whistling to your tune. Or to have, have a smile on your face when you walk down the street in the morning. Right. and see how many people smile. Right, smile up. It works. Example. So th those are very physical examples, but we know this works on consciousness too. Right. If you have any, any further statements uh, to summarize, please mm -hmm. go ahead and do so, and then we'll give out your 800 number again. Okay. I would, I would say that we have creatures on this planet, such as the cetacean family, that has made the evolutionary jump to multidimensional awareness. We can call upon them to travel with us, to guide us. I have hundreds of people who say, when I guide them through the imagery of calling up a dolphin, they literally have the feeling and get impressions and, and information from that level of reality, from a cetacean perspective. Right. Yes. And whether imaginary or, or real, it makes an impact in their life to, that improves their life. They start getting information like to, to start living their dream, to start focusing on what truly nourishes their soul. Even if it is a small step, do one more thing today, even tonight, before you go to bed. Even a thought of just loving yourself for who you are right now. Because right now, you are the most utmost creation of whatever you've worked at for a long, long time. And you might as well love that before you go on and become even greater. So we have amongst us dolphins. We have other dimensional beings such as angelic presences. We can ask for help. And our world is an infinite number of frequencies upon frequencies that increase until we reach that godhood, that god awareness from hence we all come. Well, thank you, Ilona Selke. Please give us your 800 number again. Okay, it's 1-800-7-JUST-DO-IT. That's 1-800-758-7836. That's the publisher's um, phone number, Living From Vision. Ask for that free video special that was announced on the radio. If you order the book, Journey to the Center of Creation, for sixteen ninety five plus I think they charge $3 shipping. That's a good deal. It's amazing. And it's a beautiful video uh, with the... Uh, some X-rated, beautiful dolphin video footage. <laughs> well, thank you for being here in Chicago, and uh, you've had a very wonderful uh, presence, and uh, I can vouch for that. I so thanks for being here, and we'll have you back again sometime. I think you're a great person for putting this show on the air. Thank you very much, and everybody for listening.